Creating and maintaining sitemaps are critical steps in ensuring that search engines can find, understand, and index the most important pages of your site. On today's episode of Technical Tips, we'll walk through what sitemaps are, where they belong on your site, and some helpful tips on how to make uploading your sitemaps a breeze. Stick around. Hey everyone, welcome back to today's episode of Technical Tips from Moz, where we're taking you through some important strategies each week to help you streamline your workflows and simplify complex SEO tasks. I'm Kavi, Senior Learning Specialist at Moz. I develop coursework and other learning resources for Moz Academy, where you can access in-depth SEO lessons, exams, and the chance to earn an official SEO certification. Check out academy.moz.com for more information. Today, we're focusing on sitemaps. A sitemap is really just a list of pages on a website, formatted in a way that's accessible to the search engines. If you don't create a sitemap, or if you create one that includes every page of your website, what you're telling Google is that every page is of equal importance. Either of those options is like saying, go ahead and index everything. And if the search engine sees that you're expecting them to index a lot of low quality pages, they might consider your site to be of lower quality overall than they would if you used your sitemap to prioritize your most valuable content. Now, just because a page isn't listed in your sitemap doesn't mean Google can't find it, but providing a sitemap sends a strong indexation message and it can help surface pages that are buried within a complicated navigation structure. Any sitemap you upload needs to live in the appropriate root directory for all the pages you want it to cover. If you can include all the pages you want indexed in a single XML file, you can just upload that to the main root directory of your site and have it live on a URL like example.com sitemap.xml. If you create sitemaps for individual subdomains, they'll each need to live on their subdomain's root directory, not the root directory for the primary domain. And if your site is big enough that you need different sitemaps for different subfolders, Remember that each sitemap can only affect descendants of its root directory. So if you upload a blog sitemap to the folder example.com slash blog, it shouldn't include any URLs that don't start with that same URL path. When you create a sitemap for any section of your site, you'll want to let the search engines know it exists. There are two ways to do that. First, add all of your sitemap URLs to your robots.txt file, either above or below your user agent directives. Next, be sure to submit your sitemaps to Google directly using Search Console. A single file can contain up to 50,000 URLs, which may mean that you need to create multiple sitemaps to cover different sections of your site if you have a lot of pages to be included in Google's index. If you do this, you should also submit a sitemap index file that lists your individual sitemaps. It's important to get the formatting of your individual and index files right in order for them to be accepted but you can see and copy some helpful examples of formatting for various cases at sitemaps.org protocol.html. There's no need to resubmit your files regularly if no significant changes have happened, but if you've coded a script that generates a dynamic XML sitemap, that script may also ping Google periodically so they know about any new or deleted URLs. Remember, a sitemap is a valuable method of communication between your site and the search engines, so you'll want to think carefully about what it is you're communicating to ensure you're prioritizing the right content. Seeing the pages you want to see in the search results starts with showing Google what you think belongs in their index, and your sitemaps are powerful tools of suggestion. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to follow Moz on social media and stay tuned for more episodes of Technical Tips. Hey.